may we be partakers of your blessing this evening may we be partakers of your blessing tonight in the name of Jesus oh God in the name of Jesus, O oh God, uh, just as we are, we have come to you, O oh God. Uh, may you touch us tonight. May you give us a word tonight. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, may you bind uh, your people together, O oh God, for one goal and one purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, O oh God. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. May you increase that we might decrease, O God. It's all about you tonight. We commit as many that are on their way coming and pray that you direct their self safely in the name of Jesus. Those who are watching on air, O God, may they be partakers, O God, of your work. In Jesus' mighty name, we commit the set man and the woman of God. May you meet them at the point of their needs, O God. Father, may you grant them their heart desire in the name of Jesus. May you build the church, for the gate of Hades will not prevail against us. We pray for souls, O God, souls that are dying, and souls that need an encounter, O God. Father, may you direct them, O God, here, O God, when they come in, they be established. May they be rooted, O God, in the name of Jesus. May they, may they have the strong foundation that when the wind blow, they will not be shaken, O God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh God. 
Yeah.
anything better than lifting Jesus high. Because of all he has done for you and I. So, you know, somebody sent me a very funny video. And when you hear the, that video, you will laugh. You say, how ignorant are people? He said, all through this week, this holy week, I've been hearing people telling me that day, all your debts have been paid. <laughs> Praise God. That somebody paid your debt. So how is it that I came back to work or I came back from Easter and my landlord is at my door telling me that I'm still owing rent. So does the debt that was paid for me not include my rent? Praise God. You see, these days, everything has been reduced to now, here and now. The only debt we want people, we want God, we want to agree that God has paid, is what is satisfying the flesh. If uh, you owe on, you know, on your, you owe you owe bills on your rent, God has to come and pay it. Is it possible? Have you seen God pay rent? Is God that is supposed to charge you rent? Praise God. Many things are happening that we human beings want to reduce God to the food we eat. We want to reduce it to the things we see, but God is greater than those things. Because the things that are not seen, they are greater than the things you see. Praise God. Oh, is it not why God said, eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, and the heart of man is yet to conceive. Father, I pray tonight for your children who have come here. May they not live here empty-handed. May they be loaded with, with favor from on high. May you be saturated from the oil that flows from heaven. Your lives, your health, your families, everything concerning you will blossom in the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God, let me tell you, there comes a time when the veil over you will be lifted. <laughs> a day is going to come when the doors that are blocking your testimony will be opened. It, the, the time is near. When those things are said you will not prosper, they will bow down to your God. Because they're going to see you prospering. I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospered. My hope is built on nothing else. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every fire and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking Put his covenant and blood support me in the whelming flood when every earthly prop gives way then, then in all my hope and stay on Christ the solid Rock I stand, all on the ground is sinking sand. All on the ground is sinking sand. Every day when he comes now with trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the truth. On Christ the solid rock I stand, My brothers and sisters, we are now in a period of post-resurrection. Easter is over. Jesus is no more in the grave. And soon he will start showing himself to you and I. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? See, Jesus will start popping up when you don't expect him. So it's not a matter of the public, you know, show. Just to tell people I was there when they buried him. You know, there's a song we sing. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, Sometimes it touches me to tremble, tremble, and tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And it goes on and on and on until they ask you, Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when our God rose from the dead? <laughs> 
Were you there when our Lord rose from the grave? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when he rose up from the grave? Child of God, the reason these things happen sometimes and we wonder what is going on. Because it will be an anomaly for somebody who knows that something great has happened in your life and still you look like what they used to say yesterday. After the resurrection, if you have gone through the resurrection experience, you should pivot. Hello? If you were crying before, now you should be smiling more. If you were hopeless before, now you should have some hope. Praise God. If you were sad before, everybody that see you now will ask you, why are you so glad? I am so glad. That Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me and you. It's not just for me. It's for you too. Every time, my brother, my sister, you feel you are knocked down, get up. Praise the Lord. When the enemy comes against you like a flood, God has an enduring promise over your life. He said, I'm going to send my angels. He's not coming by himself. Because if he comes, there will be an earthquake. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's going to send an angel. And they will raise a banner over you. And you wonder, what would that banner be reading? He said, the banner says what? Love. Praise the Lord. I love you with an everlasting love. Oh, if your problem is because your rent has not been paid. I got something coming your way. Stand up and call upon him. And say, Father, for me to agree that you actually died for me. Let my rent be what? <laughs> if you haven't tried that and it, it, you know, and it worked, or, you know, don't, don't, don't complain. Because God said, he thought oh, you have asked me of nothing. Praise God. Just open your mouth and ask. And I will give it to you. This morning, uh, this night, we're going to look at what happens after the resurrection. So today we're going to call the Bible study life after <laughs> life after resurrection. Life after Easter. Hello? How is it going for you after you ate the Easter egg? Praise God. <laughs> after the Easter egg, what else? Jesus is going to come to town. Throw falls. I want you to open your Bible. Let's read our Bible tonight will be based on the book of say, uh, John. Gospel according to John, chapter 21. And we are going to read from verse 1 through 19. This month, you know, we have entered the month of patience. True or false? I know Jesus has not visited you yet. That's all you say. All I'm going to ask you is wait what? Wait what? Wait patiently. Your turn is coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If I were you, I would start coining what I'm going to tell him when he comes. Because he's going to come to interview you. Some of us, he will ask us, what do, who do men say I am? Some of us, he's going to ask you, how much did they say I forgave them? <laughs> Hello? Some of us, God is going to ask you, where are those people, those things I kept in your hands to hold for me? Praise God. You see, for each and every one of us that we call ourselves Christians, God has a specific assignment for you and for me. 
Praise God. Some of us, he has entrusted your family. Your family is in your hands right now. In other words, whatever happens to you will affect the entire family. True or false? To some of you, God has put you, they made you the head of a department, the head of the place where you work. Hello? If he comes now and say, give me account, what would you say? Or Christ may even come, a problem may show up in your life and say, let me test whether you know what you did during the Easter. Is that not true? Let me test your patience. Let me test your love. Is that not true? Let me test your long suffering. Let me test your fate. Such moments do come in the life of a Christian. And tonight, Father, as I speak, as we read your word, may these words bring life. May the entrance of this word in our ears today, may it usher in your glory, your peace, your patience, in Jesus' name. After these things, Jesus said, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. I'm reading John chapter 21, starting from verse 1. And on this wise shewed himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with you. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Somebody said nothing. <laughs> Can you imagine? After hiring a ship, there is rent to pay. And they came back empty handed. Nothing. If you were you, that day your, your tolerance level would be very low. Is that not true? In fact, if, if another fisherman looks at you, you say they are laughing at me. <laughs> you can't even say, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Praise God. You, are, you don't understand. When you are going through stuff, any little thing can trigger you. I can say good morning and you say, did I ask you to, you know, to greet me? <laughs> Praise God. Well, now let's see what happened. But when the morning was now come, Jesus, can you keep moving, please? Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not. That it was Jesus. Child of God, let me tell you, the day Jesus is going to meet you, you may not know he's in. <laughs> he might be standing on the wayside, even trying to help you, but you look at him as a madman. He may be somewhere begging. <laughs> in fact, where you will see him, and you know he's talking to you. He saw you go get that change in the, at the counter. And all he's asking is exactly the amount of change you just saw. <laughs> I say this one, it's not me you're going to get today. Is it because you saw that the exact change they gave me now, that's what you want to take? Some of us were passing by. True or false? He might also meet you in your moment of need. When you need help. And the person who tells you, don't worry, take mine, you know, you begin to become, you know, some of us are, you know, we are, there is a time we're going to, we, you look and you see somebody's proudly poor. 
Being poor and what? <laughs> look, look at me here. I'm proudly poor. <laughs> I rather die than to eat your food. What will happen to you? Die. Praise God. Proudly poor. God is coming. He's telling you and I today. Please listen attentively because there's something somebody will learn. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? Now, is this not adding salt to injury? Hello? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Well, cast your net on the other side. Is somebody moving, with, moving along with me? Please, I'm... Um, I cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. And without asking, they cast therefore and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, <laughs> I, I, you know, there is something that will happen to you and you know, there is no other person that can do this but somebody who has done it before. Praise the Lord. Somebody who did it before. It could be a, in a pitch dark, in a pitch dark area, and somebody, you are hungry. Everybody is crying of hunger, but somebody reaches deep down with the little one they're going to use to sustain themselves and say, here, take it. You need it. The moment you accept it, you know who, somehow, you, you, God will open your ear. I say, this must, you know, when your parents are there and you are hungry, even if they are hungry too, what would they do? They will forget about their own hunger and make sure you eat. True or false? A religious person will say, no, mommy, eat. <laughs> Your mommy is doing it because, you know, he cares for you. Your daddy is doing it because you are the only thing. He said, you know, I, I, I've, I've gone to this stage. I'm older than you. I know how to survive. I know this one will not kill me. God, I believe in God. Do you understand what I'm saying? An adult can be a hunger more than a child. True or false? If you don't give a child, a child is hungry. You don't give a child. Even if you are in an aeroplane, what would the child be doing? The child will be crying to attract negative attention to who? Would the child be ashamed? <laughs> in, in fact, when you tell the child, stop crying. That's when he, the child will do what? A louder. <laughs> Praise God. So, so it is better, child of God. And look at what Jesus called them. Children. Hello? Children. Have you meat? And they say no. And that no, you can see how that no, that no is, this is the end of the what? Discussion. So if somebody can tell you no with excuse, with reasons, is that not true? <laughs> this, is, this is no, that you better mind your business, old man. You know we are children. Mind your business. We don't have fish. And Jesus tells them what to do. And they did it. Not questioning. And all of a sudden, somebody deciphers what was going on. Praise God. You know, it's possible you are looking for something in the house. And there is nobody there to give you that thing. And then you remember. Something happens and you find it. All of a sudden you say, yes, I know. My parents kept this. They knew we would need it. Somebody hearing me? They, 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 they knew. They knew that a time like this will come. And we will need such a thing. That's how you, you remember people who are thinking for you. Praise the Lord. A child can be useless, careless with money, but then forgetting that the school fees time is coming. True or false? And on the day he went to school, 
he goes to school, they, the teacher says, well, nobody studies today except you show us the receipt of your school fees. True or false? And the student will be wondering, thinking, oh, the one I was given, I had already squandered it. Praise God. You call this person, call this person. Maybe you, do, you don't want to call back your mother again for the same money. All of a sudden, you remember, okay, let me call my daddy. True or false? <laughs> Maybe daddy doesn't know that mommy has given me something. And you call your daddy. And you say, don't worry. Here it is, I kept this money. Even though your daddy and your mommy are talking, they are in the same house. Is somebody hearing me? But they make an exception just to rescue you for that hour. Praise God. I don't know whether somebody is hearing what I'm saying. God is working out something on your behalf. You may have made a mistake. And most of us do. Or can I say, or let me just say most of us, me included. I don't want to include you because you do everything right. Everybody I know has made a mistake. There are most people that don't know. You say, my, my, I will look onto the hills. From hence does what? Commit my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. When there is nothing else to rely on, a child of God should look up to the Lord who is the author and finisher of his faith. Now, please, I want you to get this. Therefore, the disciple who Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter had it, somebody, did you hear that? There are a lot of people that are slow starters. Do you know that? There are a lot of people that don't pay enough attention as you're paying. But once they are shown what to do, they are zealous. The moment Peter had it, maybe Christ, just suggestion. Because all Peter could have been doing by going to fish was that he's trying to get some things out of his mind. True or false? I don't know whether you, sometimes you take a car, you, you enter the car, let's just take a drive. You're not just driving because you want to bump fuel. True or false? You are driving, you put the, the, wind, the windshield down because you want to clear what? Your head. A lot of things are going through there. And if you don't take that very time out, you might cause something, you might do something that you will regret forever. Praise God. So I guess Peter was taking a time out. And little did he know that everybody wanted a time out. Including Thomas. <laughs> Is that not true? Even Thomas wanted a time out. <laughs> Thomas would say, well, if you guys leave, is it only me it's going to be? I'm going to go too. And everybody followed Peter. Unknown to them and unknown to the ones. Remember, it wasn't all the disciples that went. Praise Master Jesus. It wasn't all of them. Some of them stayed behind. Some of them were busy doing other things. But in that place, even Thomas encountered Jesus also. Hello? Oh my God, you don't get Your turn is coming. I said your time to testify is coming. Amen. It may have been their turn yesterday. Remember, Thomas was not there when Jesus came in first. And they were making fun of him, calling him doubting Thomas. But today Thomas said, no, 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 I'm here today. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm here live and direct. May you not miss the day of your visitation. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little, fee, in a little ship. Remember now, the other disciples came in what? So there were some disciples that did not follow Peter, but when they heard that Peter 
and the rest had gone, what did they do? They followed. Praise the Lord. You know, there are people in this work of God, when they know you started something good, they will not follow you to finish it. They would rather knock everything what? Down. They would rather impede the work. It's possible that Peter going has energized the other people to come also. Even though some of them came after these ones have left. Life is in waves. Praise God. The height you got today, don't ever preclude the fact that somebody else can be there tomorrow. Just because you started first doesn't mean you, you, are, you are only person to finish. Is that not true? It's a race. So the other people met them, the other disciples. For they were not far from land. As soon as, go on, go on, I, I got it. As soon as then, as soon then as they were come to land, they saw fire of coals there, and fish laid there on, and bread. <laughs> this one, this one amazes me. They didn't have fish. The person telling them, do you have fish, and told them to go and bring fish, is already barbecuing fish for them. He has already baked bread for them. My God. Whatever God is asking you to do for him, he has already done for you. Amen. Praise God. When God is telling you, come, he's already there waiting for you. We are, we, you and I, I think our problem is our faith is small. If I say that, am I going to be mistaken? We have little faith. And that's why Jesus said, I don't even want you to have, you know, big one. Go and get faith as little as what? Mustard seed. Believe I can do it. Praise God. Believe. So fish was already there. Jesus said unto them, bring you of the fish which you have, not, which you have now caught. Oh, but I thought there is a fish on the fire. But God says, bring the one you did what? You know, some people come in the church. They see seat on the church. Is that not true? You know, if you have ability to change those seats, you can change the seats. A am I making sense? Some people come in the church. We have vacuum. But that vacuum is not as fast as you want it. True or false? Get vacuum. It's not because there is no fish. There is fish. But God wants something to come out of you as a token. Is God hungry? You know, at the time he told them, I'm not hungry for meat or blood. If I want to eat meat, what will I do? He said the, 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 the cows, the goats in a thousand hills, who do they belong to? To God. In other words, when we are giving God something, we are giving it not because he doesn't have it. Not because he needs it. It's for your own sake. Praise God. Because whatever you put in his hand is secure until that day. The man of God said, I know in whom I have believed. And I am fully persuaded that whatever I put in his hand is secure. I want you to put, keep the topic we are talking about in my life after Easter or life after the resurrection. Is that not true? That's where we are. And that one day Jesus will come and meet you and ask you to show him what you have learned from all the noise you've been making. Because the taste of the pudding is in what? In the eating. If you say you are a Christian, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Your life must reflect it. Enough of talk too much Christians. <laughs> Enough of talkative people. A lot of people looking for what God is going to give them. God wants what, what can you bring? What do you have in your hand? Praise the Lord. What can you do for the least of these? 
We are still reading. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land, full of great fishes, and 150 and three. And for all there, for all there were so many, uh, for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Child of God, God is going to so bless you when you have served him sincerely. When you have served him, you know, wholeheartedly, he's going to bless you to a point where people will be looking and say, is it only you? You're going to live life and you're going to live it abundantly. When God is going to do something for you, he's going to do something extraordinary that people will begin to wonder. People will know. You become a sign and they wonder. And they will say truly, this one believes God. Others will be in the hospital and you'll be, you'll be at home. Others will be crying, you'll be smiling. Others will be complaining, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be giving God glory. Praise the Lord. Because the life of a Christian is one, you know, of contentment. With whatever God has given you, you are able to give to God. You give back to God, not because he's hungry but because he has commanded you. Praise God. I will tell you this. I guess when Simon Peter was bringing those fish, because prior to Jesus telling him, cast your net on the right, he caught nothing. True or false? Simon Peter would say, let's finish. If this fish, if everybody, if you're going to, you know, take all these fish. Take it. But we know you don't need it. You are doing this for what? For us. Christ did not need to come and die on the cross for himself. He died because of who? In heaven he was already king. Are you hearing me? So not that somebody will say, oh, you know, this one is coming to church because he wants to show people he's a, he's a, he's a Christian. You're, you're a liar. Because when you are lying about the things of God, it shows. It's going to be mechanical. It's going to be something that every time you are frowning doing it. But you are serving God and you are serving God with joy. God will bless you in joy, with joy. Praise the Lord. One thing I want you to know, and maybe it's becoming too repetitive, because after we finish reading this um, verse. I'm going to point out to you about four important lessons. Praise the Lord. Four important lessons. Jesus said unto them, come and dine. But you just told us, you know, bring, where, where are the fishes you caught? You just wanted to show them that, uh, yeah, those fishes, have you counted it? They counted it 153. <laughs> they, they come and eat these ones, whatever you want. Do what? I, did. I didn't send you there to bring it. I just wanted you to know that once before you met me, you ran, you you came out, came out empty-handed. But now that you came to me, now that you met me, now that I came, I came, you obeyed. You're gonna have more than enough. Come and eat. You see, most of the time. Don't you ever think you are the one feeding God? Somebody hearing me? Don't you ever think you are the one making God to be God? Look at yourself and say it's a privilege for God even to use me. Because in the house of a king, there are many vessels. Is that not true? Some to honor and some to what? There are many laborers in the field, but not all of them are working for God. Some are laboring for themselves. Some are laboring for their belly. The Bible says both them and their belly will perish. There are times people come to you, all they come to you is to scatter. Is that not true? 
There are people who come to you, they come to the, you know, you got to come to God with a pure heart to worship him in spirit and in what? And none of the disciples does ask him, who are thou? <laughs> because in their mind, child of God, once John knew and Peter knew, everybody is now looking up to Peter. True or false? <laughs> and Peter didn't waste time. Peter jumped into the water. They would tell themselves, if Peter is eating, you better eat. <laughs> Don't ask him any question. Because somehow, everybody has come to understand it is who? It is the Lord. I pray for somebody. That thing you are looking for, that situation you are in, may God show up suddenly. And when he shows up by his handwriting, by his modus operandi, that he didn't ask you for a dime, he didn't ask ask you a question. He began to do that which you thought was impossible. May you realize it is God's work. Amen. Problem with us is that we want people to praise us. We want people to acknowledge that we are doing all these things and nobody is doing anything. <laughs> we want people to Wherever we are, they raise us up and hail you. No, the person we need to hail is King Jesus. Praise God. It's Jesus. And then look at verse 13. Jesus then cometh and he taketh bread and he gives it to them. And likewise, he took the fish and gave it to them. And they remembered. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter. Now this is where the interview came. Hello? <laughs> after you have filled your stomach, you have no excuse. And like the person that sent me that video... After his rent has not been paid. What next? Because your rent can be paid, but your car note is not paid yet. <laughs> True or false? And even your rent and your car note can be paid, but you still got a ticket on the way and you're going to pay for that ticket. Is it every moment you call God to pay for it? Sometimes you need to take responsibility. True or false? Sometimes you need to come up with something and say, I'm here, you know. Is, is it not what he told them? Bring your own fish. But you're going to take it home because I have one already here for you. <laughs> Praise God. Some of us will say, ah, he's asking us to take his own fish. Let us see how many he's going to take. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's trying to divide it, you know, so that he can take a tent. <laughs> My God. Somebody please understand. The things of God, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. When you are counting beans for God, you do this, you mark. The day God is going to come for you, it will be, you will be overwhelmed. You see, they, they say, count your blessings. Do what? Them, they will, and then it will surprise you what God has been. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Peter, remember Jesus didn't say to all of them, hello, Jesus spoke to who? Peter. Please understand, understand. There are, you know, the things about everybody can be a captain. But there is going to be one captain at a time. Praise the Lord. I didn't say you are not meant to be a captain. But right now there is one captain. Of all the people there, Jesus didn't say, every disciple, do you love me? He didn't say that. He addressed Peter. True or false? 
And some of them may be laughing at Peter by now. Because some of them had the story of Peter. They saw that Peter was there. <laughs> After he showed the first wave of bravery, cutting off the ear of Marcus. <laughs> Is that not true? Peter took offense. Maybe. You know, it's possible. How is it that I cut off this man's ear and you put it back? Why, why, didn't, you, why didn't you help me cut off the other one? <laughs> Jesus said, it's not time. This is not the way to fight it. Sometimes there is a better way. A more excellent way. Jesus said to Peter, uh, to Peter Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? Who guess? Who guess what he was pointing to? <laughs> he didn't say lovest thou me more than the disciples. That's not what he was saying. The reason why he told them bring the fish you caught. It's Peter, if I can make you in a few minutes to catch this amount of fish, what I'm about to commission you to do is going to be greater. See, I don't want to look with the eyes of men. I want to see with the eyes of faith. Praise God. Even if it's my God... I come face to face. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will never ever, you know, stop believing that God is with me. Even if I'm walking alone, I believe that he's by my side. I am in him and he in me. And if that is the case, child of God, I will lack nothing good. You will lack nothing good. You will call upon him and he will answer you. And he will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. 16. Go on, quickly. He said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Remember before he pointed more than, he said more than these. Did you people see what is going on here? He's reducing it. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He didn't put more than these. So he wasn't pointing at the fish. The issue of the fish is over. Is that not true? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love you. And he said to him, Feed my sheep. Because there's no way we can love God and not love one another. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that we are the sheep of his pasture. Is that not true? Whatsoever anyone does to you, they are not doing it to you, they are doing it to who? To Christ. Look at 18. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, when thou was young, thou gathest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand. And another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. 19. This spake he, signifying by what debt he should glorify God. And when he has spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Praise God. Follow me. That's another subject. Because there are people you tell follow you, they say, you know, 
with all that you have told me, you know, before I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be as hard as this. I was thinking, um, you know, there was something I didn't do. <laughs> Can I go and ask my wife? <laughs> Can I go and tell my parents and see what they will say? When people tell you that, they are having what? They are having double mind. A double-minded person cannot receive anything good from God. Make up your mind. Praise God. Make up your mind. Follow me. Look at 20. Oh, we are stopping at 19. Okay. God bless you. Now, after we have gone through what we read now, I want to discuss the matter. When Jesus meets you, Will you, will you be ready? At least ready to obey. Because that was what they needed first, to obey. True or false? They had to take the initiative. It's hard for us to realize, child of God, what other people are going through. At this point, the disciples were going through a lot because they were full of fear and shame. Do you understand it? Before, they were in a mega church. <laughs> the church was mega. Oh, I don't know whether somebody is getting what I'm I said before, when Jesus was with them, when they stay, 40,000, 4,000, 5,000. We come for dinner. <laughs> but this, right now, they have not even a dime to feed themselves. Couldn't even catch a fish. Praise God. You know, your life as a Christian can get to that point. A time will come when you feel abandoned, when you feel alone. When those people that were shouting, Hosanna. <laughs> Why, even while you're closing your eyes, you're going to see them shouting, crucify. Don't worry. Because God knows the end. From where? From the beginning. As long as your hands are up. Somebody called me today out of nowhere. And said, after the first conversation, the person dropped. And then I said, let me take a nap. Not more than 15 minutes. Because, child of God, unlike most people, see, once I am left, once the Holy Spirit, the Spirit leaves me to just drop everything, right there is when I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to struggle, struggle to keep awake to feel. But immediately I, they say, oh, you know, you are free to go. I am free to sleep. Because he, he giveth his beloved what? Sleep. While I was sleeping, that phone rang again. And I, I said, ah, is everything okay? He says, yes. I just called to give you this testimony. <laughs> I said, okay, talk, because I don't, we have already spoken exhaustively. What is, and she told me. He said, this began in 2022. But that ordeal, I don't know why it is that when I need somebody, when I need somebody to speak to, for some reason, that's when Communication will open between us. He said, I am free. I am innocent. And I am not guilty. I pray for somebody here. There is a news coming your way. All of them that have been putting wickedness on your head, God will by one means or the other convict them. To come and declare you free, not guilty, and innocent. 
in Jesus' name. Believe me, that word is for somebody here. Not long from now, the enemy will show up and they will say, now we know the truth. <laughs> now I know because we have heard and we have seen. Oh my God. After the resurrection, there is going to be an opportunity for those that say that they are Christians to say so. Praise God. How? How? You know, when events like what Peter just experienced and the disciples just experienced happens, even if you were afraid before, your fear will go. Praise the Lord. How is it possible that when I needed him most, that's when he appeared? Because Jesus took away shame from their faces. Is that not true? If they now add into their, in their resume, this sect, this sect that are always, uh, this bunch of people that are always working together, they are looking like madmen when you see them run. Because they will come and, and rent your boat and they won't pay you. <laughs> they will add that to their own, you know, to their resume of problems. True or false? When somebody, you know, when, when, when what is following you is controversy, when whatever people say about you is what somebody else wants to confirm with what just transpired between you, then you know that there is a problem. The enemy is at work. Praise God. Because for, for us human beings, seeing is what? Believing. Now, after downsizing from a mega church, now nah, these people are ragtags. Is that not true? They are hiding from one place to the In fact, they can stay in their house and keep the door open. What did the, how did the Bible describe how they stay? Whenever they are in the room, they are what? They are locked. They lock the door. They lock themselves in a room. <laughs> and that's why they cannot go out alone. <laughs> When they are going out, they must go out as what? A group. So that you can one can protect the other. <laughs> Praise God. And they even learned that when they were going, not all of them went out at the same time. One group left and another wave came. <laughs> Throw falls. And then they met. But after that encounter, when Jesus said, now follow me, can you imagine how they were walking? They were now walking like kings. They were now walking like people who have no fear. I pray for you. After this Easter, what used to put you to fear will begin to run from you. What, be, what was already, you know, trying to prove hard in your life will become easy from now on. What the enemy has done will bring glory to God in your life. You will see. Everywhere, my brother, my, you know, you know the confidence I have right now is that I feel that in my heart, I have, he has interviewed me. Within me, he has interviewed, and he has told me, son, follow me. <laughs> don't look to the left, don't look to the right. Keep moving forward. Continue to do what I have called you to do because I will be with you even until the end of time. And he will be with you. And he will be with you. And he will be with our children. In Jesus name. Now child of God. I want us to take. A few lessons out of here. Anytime. Jesus meets us. Praise God. He doesn't meet us for. Just chance. He comes with a purpose. Praise the Lord. There is going to be a lesson out of it. Praise God. And whenever we want to go meet Jesus, let us go with a purpose. Hello? What is that purpose? That I will not live here empty-handed. 
I am not going to remain sad. I will not remain down. I will not remain forsaken because I know that Jesus loves me. Praise God. Attitude is everything. Don't come to church. Just coming to church to make everybody sad. Hello? Do you know there are people who do that? They come here. By the time they leave here, even if you have faith, you look for a drawer in the church here and put it. So that you can look outside and see whether somebody is outside there waiting to waylay you to take, the, to take your faith from you. Child of God is not... When you come into the house of God, he said, in the presence of God, there is joy. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. You can't come before God and you're doing as if you are coming before man. No, that should be far from us. We have to come with an assurance that we are not coming to see man, we are coming to see God. Praise the Lord. Even if we are sick, we are coming so that we're going to hear a word that can take us away from thinking about the worst case scenario and then begin to look forward to a day when the sun of righteousness will rise over us and it will come with healing in his wings. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Two, three people that we saw that Jesus met. Number one, we see Mary Magdalene. Is that not true? Mary Magdalene interviewed, Jesus interviewed Mary Magdalene at the grave, at the, at the mouth of the in, the, 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 in front of the grave, or near the grave. Is that not true? Mary Magdalene came with other women to anoint the body of Jesus. But Jesus, they, they, when Jesus came, Jesus said, well, what are you looking for? They're living in the, among the dead. Jesus reintroduced himself. He said, Mary, this is, and the voice, remember, it was what they the Lord said that triggered the, the, the man of God, John, to tell Peter, this must be the Lord. Is that not true? It was the voice of Jesus that made Mary Magdalene change her greeting. Her tears turned into joy because all of a sudden he said, she said, Rabboni, master. Praise the Lord. When we read the book of uh, John chapter 20 from verse 1. We see Mary Magdalene. John chapter 20. Praise God. Let me see verse. Mm. Let's start from verse 15. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why we pass thou? And whom seekest thou? I want to ask somebody here. <laughs> who, who, who did you come to see here? Did you come to see man? Why are you crying then? Let your tears turn into joy. Praise the Lord. You came to see God. Believe that you have met him. Believe that you have met him. Praise the Lord. And different things happened. All of a sudden, Jesus called her by name. Look at verse 16 of John chapter 20. He said, Jesus said unto her, Mary, my God. Who, somebody, do you remember? You say, who will call me by this name? You know, there is a name that you are called. Now, when somebody calls that name, you know that this person knows me what? Very well. I remember one time we were in um, 
the church in um, Bellsville on Route 1. And the, a woman of God came. And while we were praying for her, they said, called her by a name. <laughs> we called her by that name, and she shook. I said, why did you shake? He said, the only person that calls me by that name <laughs> was my mother. Praise God. I said, no wonder. Because what you are doing now was what your mother was doing. <laughs> what is that? Somebody say, my father, my maker. What my parents passed through. What my brothers or sisters are passing through. I will never pass through. Enough of that already. Praise God. Know the name you answer. The moment Jesus said Mary, my God, something in her lit up. Three of us. She turned herself and he looked to the person that called her and said Rabboni, which is to say master. So she recognized her voice. I pray for somebody here. May you recognize the voice of God when he calls out to you. Even in your problem. And look at what Jesus told her. He said, do not touch me. For I'm not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God, your God. That was the day Jesus confirmed to them that his father is their father and his God is their God. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. I don't know the assurance you need, but may this word bring you assurance. Another people, another set of people that Jesus met was the people they called to the two disciples going on the way to Emmaus. You know, I don't know whether the Bible mentioned their names, but one, I think one was Cleopas. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and another, somebody. And we can read that in the book of Luke, chapter, 50, chapter 24. Luke 24. And you know, while I was researching on the disciples of Jesus, you know, the, the, the book of John never mentioned all the disciples. John didn't waste his time to enumerate all what? The disciples. <laughs> Only book of, you know, uh, Matthew, Luke, and Mark. And then the book of Acts. That's where the, the list of the names of the disciples were mentioned. Praise God. And when you look at the list of the disciples, Judas was mentioned twice. But I guess like most people now, you know, when the name becomes notorious, they, some other people began to use a different name for that Judas. They called him Tedus. <laughs> or Tedus. Praise the Lord. But there was Judas, and there is another Judas is what? Carry on. But let's go to the book of uh, Luke. Chapter 24. And I'm, I will mention one more thing. And we'll, we already saw the interview he had with Peter. Is that not true? Where he asked Peter three times, do you love me? In fact, in fact if he asked Peter, do you love these? He's pointing about the, the fishes. There are people today who love God because of the fishes. True or false? And they have gone preaching prosperity gospel. In, in other words, if God doesn't make you rich, you are not serving God. Hello? Those people don't care about the, the sheep. Praise God. Those people don't love Jesus as much. Because they care after the things of this world. And those people are not following Jesus. They are following after their own lusts. Praise the Lord. 
And you're going to see a lot of them. That's the proliferation you see now. Uh, the set of disciples that don't, uh, they can't even open their car door. Before they come to preach for you, they tell you how much you're going to pay. They tell you the color of the, of the suite you're going to rent. And if the hotel doesn't have it, let them repent it. Praise God. They're going to tell you how many, you know, uh, how many um, uh, 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 prayer warriors that are going to come with them. Some of them will tell you the kind of uh, candy you're going to put. Isn't this? Jesus said, you know, the foxes have holes. Is that not true? The birds have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to do what? To lay his head. So wherever he goes, he said to them, wherever you go, whoever opens the door, enter. Throw falls. Enter. It's so sad. Luke chapter 24. Is that where we were? And we are talking about the journey to Emmaus. Praise God. I want you to concentrate on verse 30. From verse 30. And behold, two of them went that, day, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, or three miles. Oh, sorry, about, uh, yeah, about 30, uh, whatever you call it. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that why they communed or why they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Praise God. But their eyes we are holding, we are holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk? And that, is, that makes you sad. Praise God. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas. Okay, so I got it. Answering said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast thou not known the things which are come to pass? There in these days. And he said to them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which, the, who, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and a word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yeah. And then, now we are hearing that one certain woman also of our company <laughs> made us astonished. Which we are early at the sepulchre. And when they had found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even as it was. Even so, as the woman has said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? All of a sudden their eyes opened. Praise the Lord. Now, most of us, we don't have to be sad Christians. We have had Jesus say it, let us believe it. Praise the Lord. While you discuss with one another, encourage one another. Don't use the starkest of the situation. Don't use the, the, the worst part of the situation to describe the, what we are going through. Let us give each other hope. Let us help each other get up from the, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, 
the, the, the grapple of, of fear. Let us, you know, not always accentuate the wickedness, you know, that we see. But let us speak by faith about the redemption that is to come. Praise the Lord. You know, you are right. Every one of us, nobody except, goes through this crisis of confidence sometimes. But for, for both of us, for all of us here, I must tell you that if we have Jesus in our lives, our story will change. Somebody I decree and declare today, your story has changed. These people, these two people that we are traveling to Emmaus, all of a sudden, their heart burned. Is that not true? The zeal was kindled. Somebody calling us a fool for not knowing what we should know. Did you not know that this Christ should suffer all these things in order to come into his glory? Yes, you believe that he was the one that would save you. Indeed, he is. But there is a way. Walk in it. Follow him. Go and meet your brethren in Galilee. And there I shall meet you and tell you what you don't know. Somebody get up. We are here tonight. Not because we are forced to be here. But we are here. Per adventure to hear Jesus say. I know what you want. Maybe you are here to be encouraged. Maybe you are here, you know, so that your life will change. I want you to open your mouth and speak to Jesus. Look at it now. He's walking with you. In that part you are walking, he's there. Are you like Peter in the, in the, in the, in the, in the river fishing? Jesus is with you there now. Are, are you like the ones going to Emmaus? Jesus is there. Did you visit him at the tomb? Uh, maybe crying because you thought they have stolen him. He's there. I pray for you. Whatever encounter that you need to have so that your situation will turn around, I pray today, let that encounter happen. And let that encounter be so real that the result will be observable in the mighty name of Jesus. You came here down. You're going to leave standing up. You're going to leave rejoicing. You're going to leave testifying of the goodness of the Lord. And you will do it in the life of the living. You will not die. You will not be put to shame. Your story will have a better end, not a bitter one. Everywhere you go from now on, may people see something that is evident that you have been interviewed by Christ, that you have met him on the way, even in your suffering, even in your moment of darkness, that he came and he lighted up your moment. He lighted up your life. I pray for somebody today. Every sickness, every wickedness, hiding in the dark, looking for well, how to pull your faith down. I pray today that they will be consumed by fire. Let the anointing of fire, the world that makes people, Allah, Allah, the world that makes people turn from tears to, to, you know, to joy. The world that makes people turn from the sick bed and they will be running around testifying of the healing of the Lord. The anointing that takes one from nowhere to somewhere. May that anointing meet with you. May that anointing locate you. May that anointing interview you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing that makes you, you had no fish. But now you have more than enough. I say may that anointing locate you. May that anointing locate this ministry. May that anointing locate your children. May that anointing locate everyone that is watching us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody say, my Father, my maker. All through the post-resurrection period. Father, let me have an encounter with you. From now on, help me to fish men. Help me to become fishers of men. Help me to take care of your sheep. Help me, mighty God, to love you above all else, above material things, above, above, uh, above, my, above my, uh, anything that the world offers. Make me, mighty God, somebody that has complete faith in you. Somebody hold your stomach. I pray, let the womb of the month of April <laughs> give birth to your testimony. The womb of the month of April will swallow every wicked thing that the enemy is throwing at you. The womb of the month of April will begin to 
be filled with river that will be poured out and there will be fresh water. Out of your belly will come out rivers of living water. People will contact you and they will, their hope will be renewed. People will meet you and their joy will be increased. People will meet you, my brother, my sister, and they shall be favored in the mighty name of Jesus. You are highly favored, not just blessed. Everywhere you go, the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and adds no sorrow will be upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, locate your children wherever we are. Though our faith is failing, though we are backsliding, though we are discouraged, but by meeting you, Father, let all that be reversed. Reverse it, mighty God. Reverse it in this ministry. Reverse it in our lives. Reverse it in our situations, in our children, in our jobs, in our finances. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Brokalu, come and there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are all welcome to the month of uh, number four. Amen. And I believe God, who has brought us this far, will never let us down. Never. All that the month of April brings for us, we will never miss any of them. Amen. Do we have any testimony tonight? Testimony time. Testimony Blessing time. time. Blessing time. Do we have any testimony in the house? If there is none, you know. It's Easter. Oh. It's Easter. We are still in Easter. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm thanking the Lord for bringing us today to service, to witness the first Tuesday, I believe, in the month of April. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God also for the daughter of Zion that the Lord delivered from the conspiracy of the wicked. You know, wherever you are, you have to be mindful. There are people at every point in time waiting to put you in trouble. Their joy, your joy is making them sad. They're always following to see how they can turn around things to make everywhere look sour for you. But this daughter of Zion said, Apostle, God has set me free. And they said I'm innocent, that I did all I had to do. And that is all it is. Because your license is important to you. Praise the Lord. Anybody that takes your license away has taken a piece of your life away. True of all? Mm. Let's be mindful. It is well with you. Amen. When the bridegroom comes. By and by. When, when the bridegroom comes. By and by. Oh, be ready. Oh, be ready. Ready when, when the bridegroom comes. Oh, be ready. Oh, be ready. Oh, be ready. Ready when the bridegroom comes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is a time of joy. It is a time of sober reflection. A time when you will look around and say, the Lord did it for me. Amen. We are happy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have just 
a little testimony that the Lord did for me on Saturday when I went to work. At the time, I was so hungry. <laughs> it was almost the end of my shift. I looked around, and these people that sells, well, you know, where we buy things, I, I wonder what, whether they were still there. It was late. But I was hungry. I didn't know what to do. I was asking myself, and where, where can I buy something? I didn't know that God in his own loving way There was a fish. Knows how to produce a fish. Look at that. <laughs> for his own. Look at that. I was there, you know, contemplating. I decided to forget about it. And somebody came and asked me a question. I answered and showed him the way. Because we are like, you know, directing people where you should go mm -hmm. and how to get to where they are going. you are going safely. And he told me, he asked me, do, do, do you care getting, um, you know, receiving something to eat. I, was, I, said, I asked myself, what's going on? <laughs> can you imagine? Or if I don't want it, I can give it to somebody else. And behold, it was a beautiful sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's what we discussed today, true or I I looked at him. I said this tells me that this is a prayer answer. I said, bring it. <laughs> and he gave it to me. I thanked him. And he was so happy that I, I gave him a good direction. I didn't know. But you see, God has that God, God works in mysterious ways. Those things that you look down on, that's how God surprises us. It might look little. But God has done it. He, I never knew that somebody would come and give me something at that late hour. And uh, I believe that God himself knew that I was hungry and that I needed something. And he sent somebody from nowhere. To bring fish. To bring fish. <laughs> And I tell you, I enjoyed that little fish. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's look, my... look, look. The, the God, God, you know, confirms his word. I said, somebody sent me a text. I said, why are they always saying, they, didn't they say, uh, you know, he paid a debt he didn't owe? And, uh, and uh, all my debts have been paid. Why is my landlord at my door this morning <laughs> telling me to pay rent? I said, if you believed that that was true, you could have opened your mouth and said, God, send an Ebenezer. Help me. God is able out of this very place He's able. He is able. And one thing else he told me, I learned while I was here. He said the disciples at the time, they were inside the, the, the biggest church ever. Three of us? No. Inside the big, wherever Jesus went, he said the multitude that will follow. But in a twinkle of an eye, <laughs> but one day, that same God preached to fishes. Huh? 
He knew that they were hungry. Is that not true? That was why he started baking the bread. Started roasting the fish. Praise God. But in order to give them satisfaction, not to get them discouraged, he should have told them, come out, I already have fish for you. What did he do? You came here to fish. You wanted to make some money. Go back. But this time around, put your net on the what? On the right side. According to, not, it's not like launch into the deep. That's another, another summer. And the moment they did, it wasn't two minutes. It wasn't immediately they did. The place was filled with what? Fishes. That just seeing that sign, somebody said, this must be God. Child of God, the person you saw was sent to answer a prayer. And I want to let all of you know, I, it, we are there, we are there 20 people there when you had that intention. Did you even tell anybody? No. Right there, call it on the name of God. And he answers. <laughs> Take it and run for it. Where we are is a citadel, is a place where God is real. The reality of this God, I can never for one minute doubt it. Other people may be boasting of the cathedral, the crowd, but I'm boasting in my God. His presence is here. I pray for you listening to us. May you encounter God. Amen. May he show up in your nightmare. <laughs> I don't want to, oh, I had a nightmare. No, let Jesus be the one showing up and he's going to come every troubled sea. In that question you have, maybe you are on the sick bed. Maybe you are not thinking that you have been abandoned. I pray may God encounter you and may you encounter God. May he change your perspective so that from now on you tell people I'm now alive. Things have changed. My level has changed. My faith has increased. My hope is renewed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Just like the man of God just said, that God is not hungry for anything. Mm. Because already he has them in quantum. In fact, he is the giver of everything. So I am trying to let us know that whatsoever we are doing for God is not a waste. If you are bringing anything in the house of God, be it penny, know that there is a reward for that. That's all. Mm -hmm. And know that who you are giving that, like we are going to give offering now. Some people do not like to give. It's hard for them. In fact, it's so difficult. Why will God, who say he has so much, mm -hmm. We want to, uh, uh, we'll be looking at my five dollar. Mm -hmm. Know that you are doing it for a, a supreme being. Don't look at man. Look unto God. You will not know how God will bless or make a way for you because of just a little offering and because of having faith in him. It might be your last money. Trust God. Mm. Because he makes the way. Amen. So let us be encouraged in our giving. Let it be a part of encouragement to our giving Hallelujah. this time. Amen. Amen. And just to add to that, you are not giving because you want to give it. You give it because there is a need. Praise God. Where you are is not free. We got to understand that. I told you here, somebody, the only reason that will make him not to believe the resurrection is that the landlord came. The landlord comes to the church too. <laughs> but we believe that God does what? 
provide. God will send people. And he has. Shall be well with all of you. Raise your offering to heaven. Father, we just want to thank you. Mm, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody here, just wave your offering to the Lord. Wave your offering to the Lord. May this offering you are waving unto the Lord, may it be visible before men and before God. May your needs today be waved away. I say may your troubles, your troublers, today they will be swatted away. Because you are standing in the place that God wants you to stand. And because you gave, God will destroy every canker worm, every low cost. God will put to shame every satanic palmer worm and caterpillar that they have sent to ravage your life. May you live here satisfied, encouraged, and blessed. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's Benediction Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. Amen. And be gracious unto thee. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Amen. And give thee peace. Amen. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. May we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely God's goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. And the people of God say, Amen.